Hey everyone, my name's Shane and I'm a big baseball fan. Welcome to my channel, 3 Up, 3 Down. Thank you for those who are returning. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel as we continue to grow. In today's video, I am going to tell you exactly how the 2022 Major League Baseball season is going to play out and who you can take to the bank as being the World Series champion. We're going to break it down division by division through the playoff system and I'm going to tell you in the end who is going to walk away with the Commissioner's Trophy in 2022. If you're saying, Shane, what makes you qualified to give these predictions? Well, I can tell you in 2021, I correctly predicted the Atlanta Braves as World Series champion. In 2020, I got the Dodgers as World Series champion. And 2019, I had the Astros winning the championship, and they lost in Game 7 of the World Series to the Washington Nationals. So I know a little something about getting correct predictions in Major League Baseball. We're going to start by kicking it off, breaking it down division by division. On each slide, you're going to see on the top the fan graph predictions that their system, they're going to break it down into run differential, runs for and against per game, per team, and see what their predictions are. Underneath, you can get my predictions of what is exactly going to happen. I don't say go and bet a fortune on it, but if you're going to listen to anybody, this is the guy you want to listen to. I'm going to take you to the bank. So let's get into it. We're kicking it off in the American League East. Easily the easiest decision this is the Baltimore Orioles are going to finish last in this division. We don't have to worry about that. I have the Tampa Bay Rays finishing fourth. Now that's going to be a surprise to some people. But what I'm seeing from the Rays is they don't have that true quality starting pitcher that can throw a bunch of innings. They've got a lot of young, unproven arms and a very injury-riddled Corey Kluber in the rotation. I think they're going to gas their bullpen this year, and they're going to start to fade through the season and have a hard time replacing all these innings that players like Charlie Morton, Tyler Glasnow, and Blake Snell have provided them over the years. So I have the Rays fading because of the lack of depth in their pitching rotation. In third, I got the Boston Red Sox. They're going to be fighting right on the edge of that playoff contention along with the Rays. I like the lineup and the mash the Red Sox can bring. The pitching really worries me, but I think Chris Sale coming back later this year from a rib injury is going to provide them a bit of spark, and they're going to have just enough pitching to get them into third place in the division. The Yankees are going to explode with this offense. The biggest question with them is going to be health. Is Luis Severino healthy in the starting rotation? Can Jamison Tyon stay healthy? Can that lineup stay healthy with Judge, Stanton, Donaldson, Hicks, who've all dealt with injury issues? I think they're going to be healthy enough to finish second in this tight, tight race of a division. And the top spot has got to be the Toronto Blue Jays. This is the team with the best lineup in the American League. They have possibly the best starting rotation in the American League. And their bullpen is quite quietly underrated. I think there's some good pieces there. Adam Simber and Trevor Richards being there the entire year. You add in a Yimmy Garcia. I like what they've got in the bullpen. The offense is going to sail. It's going to be how well that starting rotation holds up. But they've got depth behind it too with Ross Stripling and Nate Pearson. I think the Jays start off the season a little slow. They had a very, very tough schedule at the start. But they very much are going to build a lead through the summer months. And come the end of the year, the Blue Jays have the top spot in the American League East. Sticking to the American League theme, we move over to the AL Central. Fangrass has the White Sox. I've got the White Sox. The White Sox are clearly the best team in this division. It's all underneath that we're kind of looking at right now. The Royals are going to struggle to score runs. They're going to struggle to get outs. I don't see them being in the picture. Cleveland is an interesting team, but they just don't have the offense to compete. And the Starting rotation has a lot of question marks that are coming back from injury, so I don't see them competing. I don't see the Twins competing at all. A lot of people are higher in the Twins than I am. I don't see the health being there. Carlos Correa has injury troubles. Byron Buxton is always hurt. And we forget, the bullpen for the Twins just imploded so many times last year, and they didn't fix that. So the Twins' bullpen really isn't what it should be and needs to be to compete, and their starting rotation lacks depth. So I have them finishing third. The Tigers, I think, start to take a step. I think they'll struggle at the start of the year, but they're going to build through the year. They've got some really young starting pitching that's finding its foot now. The Casey Mize, Tarek Skubal, hopefully Matt Manning figures it out a little bit. The young players on the offensive side need a little time as well, like Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green. 
I think this is a team that's going to mature through the season and really progress as it goes along. Ultimately, it might lend itself a little bit to a playoff race, but in the end, I think the Tigers finish second in the AL Central and just have no com competition for the White Sox. The White Sox are far and away the best team in this division. Their offense is incredible. The bullpen is so scary. You got Liam Hendricks, Kendall Graveman, Garrett Crochet, Aaron Bummer. That bullpen is rock solid. And I love their starting rotation with Dylan Cease, Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito leading the way. You add in Michael Kopech, who moves from the bullpen into the starting rotation, maybe on an innings cap, but Michael Kopech is scary, scary good. If he figures it out as a starter this year, the White Sox are going to run away with this division. Rounding out the American League in the AL West, let's start off, Oakland is not going to be any competition this year. They're going to be the last place team in this division. The only question right now is when do they trade their starting pitchers in Frankie Montas and Sean Manaya? They're going to finish fifth. Texas has made a lot of nice improvements. Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, John Gray, all those players are going to help. But they were so far down last year. They've got a long way to dig themselves out of the hole. they got some young players coming, but they just don't have enough depth right now. Any injuries are really going to hurt them, especially in the pitching rotation. So, so Texas improves, but still struggles for me. The Angels may have the best two players in baseball, but you need pitching to win. They've improved their bullpen this year. Rysel Iglesias is joined with Aaron Loop. That should help in the bullpen. They've got some starting depth of starting to emerge a little bit with their, some of their young guys and Reed Detmers. Noah Syndergaard, if he's healthy, could help. But I just don't see the Angels being good enough in the rotation. And their offense just lacks some depth as well in some places. Anthony Rendon needs to get back to being a better player. If you're counting on Justin Upton, I don't like your chances as much. Mike Trout, if he stays healthy, maybe can lead this team to a playoff berth. But I just don't see it right now. I've got the Angels at 83 wins in playoff contention. But we'll see if they can make it in. Seattle has made a lot of improvements. I really like the improvements they've made. Robbie Ray is really going to help them. Like their starting rotation. Their bullpen is scary good as well. Paul Sewell, Drew Steckenrider, Diego Castillo. And don't forget about Ken Giles, who's back from injury this year. So the Mariners have a very good rotation. They've improved the lineup. I think Julio Rodriguez, the young rookie, provides a spark to them as well. And they push towards second place in the AL West. Overall, the Astros are just too deep of a team to conquer for any other team in this Western division. The Astros have a really good starting staff this year. They've got to fill some spots in the offense. But I think there is potential for some young guys to do so. But Kyle Tucker, Jose Altuve, Michael Brantley, these players are going to lead the offense. Look for a big, big season from Jordan Alvarez as well. And overall, it's the Astros division to take in the AL West. Turning to the National League and starting in the East division, the Nationals just have not improved enough this year. They're in a rebuilding phase. They brought in some nice pieces to try and help build a team around Juan Soto. But for me, there's just not enough there. The health questions about Steven Strasburg and the rotation is still there. So I'm going to leave the Nationals finishing in fifth place. The Marlins, I think, make some big improvements this year. Their young starting pitching staff could take them towards playoff contention. I think they fall short in the end. But they've got a really nice core there that they're building with. I like the young staff. I like some of the pieces they've added to the lineup. Hopefully they can build a more consistent offensive game this year. We'll see if they can make any improvements. But for now... I have the Marlins sitting around 500. My bigger prediction for this division is the Mets. I don't think the Mets are as good as people think. Jacob deGrom is already going to miss at least a month with an in injury. Max Scherzer is already dealing with a bit of a hamstring injury. This starting rotation could fall to pieces if these guys are injured for significant parts of the time. I don't like the Mets lineup as much as some people do. I like the additions. Starling Marte is a very good player. So here's Eduardo Escobar and Mark Canna. I don't have a lot of faith in Francisco Lindor and Pete Alonso. They're just far too streaky and far too inconsistent of a hitter. If this pitching staff sees any injuries, they're going to fall off quickly because there is not a lot of depth on this team. They're very top heavy and that's the way the Mets have always been and they always seem to crash and burn. So right around 500 is the best I'm taking for the Mets. My big one, though, is the Phillies. I think the Phillies are going to absolutely mash this year. I love the offense. 
Their starting staff is better than people give them credit for if they're healthy. You've got Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola leading the way there. Zach Eflin, I think, will improve this year. They've got some pieces. And I understand their bullpen is a work in progress, but they got three guys that, if they can find consistency, are lights out. Corey Knebel, Brad Hand, and Uris Familia. That can be a very good back of the bullpen. I got the Phillies going in the second place. They're going to challenge the Braves a little bit, but overall the Braves are still the top of this division. Their starting staff and bullpen I worry about in terms of workload after a couple of deep playoff runs, but their offense is so good. I think that carries them through parts of the year. They've rebuilt the bullpen a little bit with Kenley Jansen coming in, so I like their depth there. They've got one of the strongest bullpens there. They need to find some starting pitching, but I think they've got some depth in their system. So I've got the National League East going to the Atlanta Braves. It's NL Central time, which means there's two teams that are fighting for the bottom of this division. Both the Pirates and Reds are in rebuild mode. I don't think either one of them puts up much competition this season. I got the Reds over the Pirates because they've got better, a little bit better offense into a Joey Votto and Mike Moustakis, Jonathan India. Uh, the Pirates are really relying on Brian Reynolds and a lot of hopes and prayers. Okay, Brian Hayes, another player, looked to have a decent year. Those teams will finish out of it. The Cubs have improved a lot. I like some of the pieces they've got in their starting rotation. I think Seiya Suzuki is a real wild card there. So the Cubs are a team that I could see jumping up and maybe competing. But for right now, I'm going to kind of keep my expectations a little bit lower for right now for the Cubs. I need to see a little more consistency from some of their younger guys and see what develops with them. Top of the division is where the race is going to be. Can the Cardinals catch the Brewers? The Cardinals have the lineup. The Brewers have the pitching. We'll see which one wins out in the end. Overall, I think the Brewers pitching is far superior to anything else in this division. They've got just enough offense, and their team that I would bet on is making a move towards the trade deadline to bring in some extra offense. If Christian Yelich plays to his capabilities, the Brewers really start to run away with this thing. The Cardinals are just relying on too many starting pitchers who've had too many injuries in the past. And if you're going to trust on Albert Pujols and Adam Wainwright to hold up for an entire year again, I really question that. I think the Cardinals will slip this year because of the rotation. So I've got the Brewers capturing their second straight division title. The NL West is going to be a big competition this year. I think the Diamondbacks and Rockies are obviously going to struggle. I like the Rockies over the Diamondbacks because I like their lineup and what they're developing there. I think the Diamondbacks have some nice pieces coming, but their younger guys are just starting to reach the major league level. So they're going to have some struggles there as well. So I'll put the Diamondbacks in fifth and the Rockies above them in fourth. Then we get to the fun stuff. I think the Giants and Padres are really going to battle each other all year for the second spot in this division. I think the Padres start the year quite slow. When Fernando Tatis gets back, this is going to just take off. I think they're going to add some bullpen pieces as well. Now, I'm really going to like the Padres in the second half to get red hot, and they've got the starting staff to do it. Joe Musgrove, a returning Mike Clevenger, Chris Paddock, Blake Snell. I like what they have in their starting staff. They can really go on a run here. The Giants are a tough team to predict. I'm putting them in at 92 wins, which is probably too high. Given they won 107 games last year, it's hard to see even a 15-win regression back to 92 wins. That's a big dip, even as itself, which puts them right in that number two spot in contention in this division. I like that they're starting staff. I don't know if they got the depth for it, but we'll see what comes from that. The lineup is going to be a lot of platoons again this year, so we'll see if they can create offense. I think losing Buster Posey is a big loss just to help the starting staff out as well as that offensive production. So we'll see what Joey Bart offers this team. For now, I've got the Giants fighting for that number two spot with the Padres. The top spot in this division has to be the Dodgers. I'm predicting 104 wins. I know it's crazy to predict 100 wins for a team, but I think the Dodgers can go well over that too. If they have finding maybe another starter, this team can really excel. That's their only real weakness. The addition of Craig Kimbrell solidifies the bullpen. It gives Blake Trine a chance to pitch in the 7th and 8th innings more often. I love this team with the Dodgers. That offense is going to go crazy. So the Dodgers walk away with the National League West. So where does that set up the playoffs? Well, in the American League, I have the Blue Jays as the top seed. The White Sox will finish number 2. The third seed would go to the Astros. In the first round, they would play the number six seed, the Boston Red Sox. Fourth and fifth seeds would go to the Yankees and Mariners. 
Now, keep in mind, the playoff system in the, in the Major League Baseball does not reseed. So if Houston plays Boston, the winner there automatically plays the Blue Jays. There is no reseed, even if Houston wins that series. I think that's something Major League Baseball really needs to change. But that's what we have for this year. In the National League, the Dodgers are number one seed. The Braves are number two. That puts the number three Brewers against the number six Phillies. And in the four or five spot, we have the Giants and Padres battling it out. That will be our wild card round. Remember, all our three best of three game series at the home team or the higher seeds ballpark. From there, the predictions start. I've got the Astros topping the Red Sox, so they would face the Jays in the second round. And the Yankees knock off the Mariners, so they'll battle the White Sox. The Phillies top the Brewers with their impressive lineup, just having enough pitching to take out the Brewers. And I got the Padres taking out the Giants in that first round. I can see the Padres being on a real hot streak, so I've got them taking down the Giants to lead to our AL and NL division rounds. My championship series round sees all the top seeds making it in. I have the Jays and the White Sox facing each other in the ALCS. And in the NLCS, we have the Dodgers and Braves facing off for the third consecutive year to see who can battle it out to make the World Series. So my 2022 World Series is coming down to the Chicago White Sox and the Los Angeles Dodgers in a best of seven series. I think these are the top two teams in each league. I know the White Sox may finish the number two seed, but I really, really like what they've got. The Dodgers are a clear favorite in the National League. So here we have it. Now the big question is, who have I got taking for my World Series winner? It comes down to a best of seven series between the White Sox and Dodgers. And in my 2022 World Series, I see this series going six games and your world champion is going to be the Chicago White Sox. You can bank on this right now. I've got the White Sox with that lineup and that pitching staff and that tremendous bullpen taking home the championship. There you have it right there. I've got the White Sox winning it all. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. I greatly appreciate the support. If you haven't already done so, make sure you like and share this video as well as subscribe to the channel. We have lots of great content coming up. Make sure to check out my predictions for all the major award winners in Major League Baseball coming up, as well as a fun fantasy draft special coming up with a special guest to the channel. So make sure you check out all those videos. If you subscribe and hit that notification bell, you'll have instant knowledge of when I've uploaded new videos to YouTube. So until then, take care everyone.